hello everyone i am balaji and he is shiva and he is vinarasu uh, we all work for uh, hp as a scalability and performance e engineers and uh, helion open stack and uh, cloud system uh, we are here to share our uh, experience and how quickly we triage uh, common open stack issues um, with uh, simple automation script written with an uh, ansible so so in our day to day execution what we do we do uh, scale up multiple uh, uh, we bring multiple scale environments and uh, we do scale up of uh, all the major uh, uh, components like nova so neutron and cinder all these stuff we scale up so in this we and we come up uh, we do face lot of uh, problems in setting up uh, environment like it can be an configuration issue or an uh, so, a setup issue or a hardware issue so the issues can happen in uh, in our uh, scale testing and troubleshooting all this uh, can uh, take uh, some ample amount of time for each and every uh, engineer or an operator who does that so over here so any engineer who uh, based on the skill set the analysis time gonna vary so if an uh, intermediate or an a uh, beginner for open stack probably analyzing issue so will take some time when it comes to specifically um, open stack so open stack has grown up so huge uh, so integrating lot of uh, services components etc so the as the open stack has grown up similarly my uh, troubleshooting my uh, open stack issues are also complex say as there are many in interdependent services running on say for example uh, say i have a no boot failure so i need to check up on multiple uh, services say my nova services my neutron my database services so all these and when it comes to when we further debug into it say once we start with the logs so we need to check for the traces with the request ids and the ves with the uuids and with this we'll start up then probably we need to move on to our uh, other uh, compute services other services uh, database services and messaging queue it goes on so if you attend our earlier session so the new uh, troubleshooting and neutron how complex it is probably uh, we would have uh, seen that so troubleshooting is uh, never easy so there is no predefined uh, steps uh, defined for any sort of issue here you go troubleshoot this you are uh, going to get fixed so that's not the case with uh, any sort of problems so we need to uh, analyze each and every defect based on the we should have some checkpoints for each and everything as i said earlier so for a uh, nova boot we need to go each and every <coughs> sorry so for each and every step to check what exactly has caused that problem and fix it so there are each for each issue there are different uh, checkpoints available so <coughs> in uh, similarly so for these issues uh, what we have done so we're different uh, depending upon the complexity of issues these uh, the issues going to take time to get it troubleshooted so for an uh, uh, beginner or an uh, uh, intermediate definitely analyzing each and every components will uh, definitely take some time maybe uh, for an um, uh, operator or an admin when it comes to a production environment uh, definitely uh, anal as we need to quickly address those issues because if take an example of no boot if suddenly it doesn't happen probably we are losing our uh, uh, instance we won't be able to spawn the vm or manage the vm so definitely we need to address it as quickly as possible so this is what um, we have thought and most of the time we spend lot of uh, uh, effort and time in troubleshooting this so we had a thought uh, why don't we um, Auto, because automate this because each and every step we for uh, uh, steps we follow in troubleshooting are uh, defined okay so uh, if we have a neutron what are the checkpoints we need to check so probably each and every engineer based on their expertise level they'll have some defined steps so we have what we, uh, we need to we have checked uh, all these um, checkpoints what you have done to troubleshoot uh, uh what we have done to this is like we have all checked all these uh, collected all these uh, troubleshooting uh, steps for each and every component say for a nova neutron cinder so for all these components we have picked in all the 
individual checkpoints. For example, say neutron, say what I have with, you know, if I don't, uh, VM is not pinging, what are all the checkpoints I do? If, uh, in early sessions also they would have told. Say like, uh, in my instance, so I need to check for my VM status, services, and a lot, lot many things until I get the things fixed. So it gonna uh, eat up my time. And uh, so I need to, uh, how I can automate this uh, was a thing which was floating around us. So what we have done, so each of us so had an individual style of troubleshooting uh, uh, issues. So say I have my own style. So we have collected all these checkpoints, whatever we do, we have collected all our checkpoints uh, in troubleshooting uh, specific issue. Say uh, we have added those checkpoints to a playbook. So this uh, playbook, whenever we execute that, so it will parallelly run on all these checkpoints Say my ping is not working, it will immediately go and check for my uh, services, DHCP agents, and all these stuffs in parallel. Say if we are trying it in manual, definitely we need to go each and every uh, things uh, one by one. Say check for the, for services, then logs, then each and individual components. It's like a one by one step. Definitely it's gonna eat up our time, and probably an admin won't be interested in doing that, or uh, any sort of uh, engineer who is using that. Uh, won't be interested in uh, eating up times. So probably uh, this would be a uh, better solution. So what we can, we have added all these checkpoints, whatever we have to that specific playbook, it runs on parallelly on each and every uh, components of that uh, related to that specific issue. Say it's a NOVA ping, NOVA failure, it runs on parallelly all the dependent logs and services parallelly, and it collects all the information and it puts out to you where exactly is the issue in front of you within no time. So. Uh, this will be, uh, this will reduce the effort and time for uh, any uh, engineer or an uh, operator who uses this. So, and probably um, we have chosen uh, Ansible for this, uh, for doing this. Probably winners will pick why we have chosen Ansible. Uh -huh. Why we have chosen Ansible compared to other? programming language because Ansible is modular. We can create our own custom module and we can reuse the same module for multiple playbooks. And it is very simple to create a playbook with minimal programming language. So e even an administrator or a testing engineer can create their own playbook based on the troubleshooting flow and try to find the problem where it is exactly. And for a distributed system like OpenStack, Ansible is the best solution to find the issues on multiple nodes. The issue can occur at any point of time at any node. It's better to use Ansible to find the issues occur in that. And it is very simple to run the playbook. It's just if you know how to run a playbook and what is the playbook to run, we can just trigger that playbook to find the root cause of the problem occurred in the environment. So by taking the Ansible feature of creating custom module, we have create our own, uh, combined all the troubleshooting steps we do and created a own custom module for each troubleshooting steps. All these custom modules are kept separately for each services like NOVA, there are some, uh, some steps to find the problem. So we kept individually for each services the custom in, in the Ansible directory. So we can group those custom modules and create some play. The play can run to get some details from the uh, OpenStack or to check the component status in the, or to check some service in the OpenStack. So all these plays can combine and together and create a new playbook. We have created a playbook based on the common issues we encounter in the OpenStack, such as like if there is a VM IP failure, we can take the VM IP failure playbook and trigger it. The playbook will run through all the steps on, based on the roles of the nodes. So it may run through the controller node or the compute node or try to find out the issue where it is. It, in turn, it will use all the custom modules or the built-in modules which are available in the Ansible. These are some of the custom modules we have created. So one module is get VM details. So whatever troubleshooting we start, we, first we may need to get the instance details. So we can just run this custom module and try to get all the instance details of the instance. Basically, it just runs a NOVA show command and get all the information and store it in a JSON. The JSON can be used by some other modules to query, drill down uh, further. So similarly, there is another module to get the network details. So it will get all the network ID, state, everything. Sim we can use the network module for some other, to trigger some other module. 
you in, give input to some other module. So there is another module to check the port binding status and there is another module to check the DSCP namespace whether it is available or not. So Siva will explain how the modules are created. Hello, hello everyone. So I thought of uh, actually explaining uh, one of the scenarios we've taken, uh, which is most common in uh, our OpenStack uh, deployments. So uh, usually we uh, encounter VM IP failures, like VM will, uh, will get an IP, but internally the VM doesn't get an IP from DHCP or whatever. So we thought of explaining that, how we actually drill down the flow, and then how we automate that. So the first thing is we'll go to the, uh, we'll do some set of tasks in the controller node. So we will do first, uh, we'll get the, as Vinaraso said, we'll get the VM details. And then uh, we'll actually get for the, first we will check the VM status. That is obvious that it should be, a, VM should be active. And then we will get the VM details and which has all the hypervisor information, network information and the, segment, uh, the network ID and the IP address assigned to the VMs. So we get all the uh, information and we store it in JSON. So as you all know, if you have worked on Ansible, uh, if you have written a custom module, so everything actually should be returning a JSON. So all the custom modules should return a JSON. So actually we export that as a JSON and then uh, we, which will be consumed by other modules. So, and then we will actually check for the network details, which will be another thing. So which we, where we will get all the segmentation ID and uh, the other things and uh, what kind of uh, provider network. So is it a, a VLAN, VLAN or a VXLAN or a GRE network? And, uh, and we will check for the security group rules. Uh, so what are the rules assigned to it? And, and then we will uh, check for the port binding. So port binding is one of the first check we will do. So I will just skim through it because I think uh, most of you have attended the last session with detailed information. So I'll not go deep into that. So, uh, we will check the port binding status, uh, whether it is active or not. And then we will move to the, when everything is fine here, so we will move actually to the network node. And then uh, we will uh, check for the Neutron services. Uh, so we will check for whether all the services, DHCP service, metadata agent, and other things are all active. And uh, so we'll check for the namespace. So as I've already said, uh, so there are some details we are getting from the controller node. So we actually get the uh, network ID. From the network ID, we can actually uh, check the what is the DHCP namespace assigned to it. So once we get the namespace, we will check whether the namespace is actually created, and then, then we can actually use, uh, do some uh, operations with the namespace. And we will check for the open vSwitch ports. So most of the uh, issues we encounter in Neutron is because of configuration issues. So we might not have configured one of the bridges correctly or one of the uh, ports uh, is not there or uh, similar to that. So there, there won't be an integration bridge or uh, something, uh, tunnel bridge. So we will check all of those, validate all of those and uh, make sure that the open is, uh, con there is no configuration issue. And then we will, similarly, we will check for the VXLAN tunnel configuration as, uh, so uh, we will check whether the, uh, tunnel is established between the compute node and the network node and the compute node and vice versa. So we will check for the VXLAN configuration. And the, on the compute nodes, uh, we will actually check for the uh, neutron agent services, the similar uh, agents and the IP table rules. So um, IP table rules where we will check for the DHCP information, uh, whether the port 67, 68 are all active and other, um, uh, there are a bunch of rules which we need to validate. And then we will check for the open vSwitch ports. And then the similar, uh, the VXLAN tunnel is established and we were able to ping the VXLAN IP. Also. So if there is, uh, uh, so we, what we have done is we actually get the network detail, getting the network details initially, so we will find what kind of a network. If it is a flat network, so we will skip some of these uh, custom modules. And then uh, we will, uh, if it is a VLAN, uh, there are some uh, configuration. We don't have to check the VXLAN flows and all those stuff. So we have actually made it modular so that, um, so we can put some more information, we can drop some of the information. And then, so the, these are some of the steps we have not, uh, actually put everything together because it doesn't fit on one page. So, uh, so these are some of the things we identified. So this uh, information is uh, provided by engineers uh, whoever has worked on it, and then we collected it. And once we have got this, so what we thought is, 
we do it every now and then for every instance or every every time we encounter this issue we follow the same procedure which follow the same checkpoints so what we can do is we can just take this modular components automate it and then keep them as uh, simple python scripts like uh, which can be used in ansible so what we have done is we have actually used uh, made this as custom modules each of them as a one custom module so once we have arrived at all these custom modules so what we will do is we'll put together all of them in one play so one play will actually run on controller node or uh, one play will uh, run on the network node so we have categorized them according to the type of nodes so one play which will uh, run all the modules related to the type of the node so if uh, this is actually what we have followed so this is open to interpretation so we, we can actually if uh you have uh, separate nodes for a nova a nova components or a separate node for the neutron components so you can design it as a uh, you want but we have followed this uh, modularity based on the helion open stack we have used so and uh, for the network node we have similar uh, modules we have grouped them together and put it in one play and then uh, for the compute node the similar uh, play so once we have all these plays together so we give that to the test engineers or the um, whoever is using openstack who wants to triage or uh, do uh, this so they can use this and they can actually just call this uh, custom modules together and then put it in stitch it in one piece and then they can have their own steps they can add it plug it in and then they can form that procedure to troubleshoot and then is it, it doesn't require any programming language to after this so once you have the custom modules written you don't have to know about any programming language you just say i get the vm details of this id and then uh, check the dhcp namespace of this network details or, or something like that so we put that in procedure format and then we can use it whenever we want so this constitutes one playbook so we have named the playbooks in the order of like Uh, what is the issue and that will be one playbook so if it is a vm ip failure this will be a vm ip failure playbook and if it's a nova error state or vm error state there is one playbook so we have done like that so so this is how we have done so i'll just skim through uh, how the module actually we have written it's very simple it just requires a basic python language uh, knowledge so uh, what we will do is we will write one function per module so uh, the rule of thumb is actually you will have to write one only one uh, uh, task per uh, uh, or one troubleshooting checkpoint per uh, ansible module so that makes it very modular we can use it in multiple other playbooks suppose if there is a uh, nova boot failure then you will need uh, the to get the instance details so this can be used for multiple playbooks so i, I would suggest that we will we always followed like um, to write in a, um, one uh, checkpoint per module so we uh, we, we have used the basic uh, ansible um, um, basic functions which is already defined so we have used the module ansible modules uh, um, functions like fail json and exit json which they have handled it pretty well so where we can say that this is a uh, failed and this is the message you have to throw and uh, if it is changed uh, if it is uh, changed or not you just give it and then you say it's exited properly and uh, you just give the inputs and and then is that's it so it is just a uh, 10 to 11 lines of code per each module and then once you have this module written then you can actually go to the playbook so this is how the playbook looks um, so you will have the the uh thing which is in green are the modules we have already written so so this is uh, as simple as you just say get vm details and you pass the vm id so once you have that and then get net network details and what is the network name and so once uh, and then you can see that the host it can run where it has to run it's a local host or it's in the controller nodes or whatever you can specify and then so that one component is is actually uh, for one play constitutes one play so we have three plays here uh, so one will run on the local host and one will run on the network nodes and one will run on the compute nodes so so this is how we write the procedure and then you can see there on the right there is a host file so where we will specify what are the network nodes so you can have uh, tens and of uh, network nodes and a lot of uh, network uh, compute nodes usually what we faced in scale testing is so whenever we want to triage any uh, 
of the issue. So we have to go to multiple nodes. If there is, uh, uh, you've mentioned a, a high availability for network, uh, network, you will have to go to multiple network nodes uh, because the namespace is existing on multiple network nodes. So you will have to specify what are the network nodes, and then it, uh, Ansible, since we are using Ansible, it makes it very easy actually to run it on all, all the checkpoints parallelly in all the nodes. And then you put the uh, compute nodes and all the details, and then you run this playbook, and it will give, give you what is the actual error. So I'll just show you some of the screenshots what we will get on uh, this. So, so this is one of the play where it has failed that there is a configuration issue. So you, there is no conf, uh, tunnel bridges configured. So, so that's why it has failed. So th this will give you some of the messages like this. So whatever we put in the custom module, that message is shown. So similarly, if you have uh, issues in multiple places, you can actually find out in one single run. And if this is one of the sample screenshot where everything is passed, you will get all greens. That means um, there, 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 there could be an issue which we have not actually traced it. So this helps actually, you don't have to do the uh, triaging steps again and again. Whatever is known is already covered. So you just run this playbook and then it says that, oh, okay, so these are the things that uh, I already know these checkpoints are covered. And there is something else which is causing the issue, which is a new um, thing, uh, so the new error, or it could be a code issue or is a, uh, a bug. So that's how you figure it out. So that's all I have right now. So, um, so you can have, so these are the references uh, we have got. So, um, so we have uh, taken this example from this blog, so, and then we have automated it. So you can t have a look. And, uh, and uh, so there is a Git repo where I put the sample file where uh, I've written for the ping. And uh, so you can have a look at this Git repo and uh, contact us if, it is, if there is any uh, issue with that. So we can help you and I uh, know how to automate this uh, procedure. procedure. Any questions?